Hello everyone, welcome to Raise Aerospace and Kerbal Space Program 2 version 0.1.3.0. So this is now with patch 3 installed and we have many fixes listed in the patch notes, though not really the one that I was most looking for, which was the SOI change fix where the orbits after exiting certain SOI like that of Duna and Jules would produce incorrect orbits in the incorrect direction and uh, yeah, that has apparently not been fixed, but we were warned not to expect that particular fix because it was more complicated. What we do have is like the number two most important fix that I was looking for, which was the fix to the wings falling off randomly, especially on the launch pad where they can't seem to bear their own weight. And at the point in the patch notes that says this is added multi-joint system for wings that places a scalable array of four joints along the length of the wing root. Now, will those four joints be good enough? Will they be better than the one joint? And what about all movable wings anyway? But anyway, we are going to test that by making a rocket that will require fins. And the reason I'm not doing planes is usually the fins don't fall off on the runway. We get a lot of bounciness, but if I want to solve the fins falling off problem, usually putting it on the runway is the solution. So we're going to go with a rocket that will require fins, which means it's going to have something really big on top and be very draggy. And we will see how it goes. And I'll do this in a fresh save. Uh, nothing has happened in this save before. So new campaign. Um, we'll say test patch three. There are a lot of fixes listed in the patch notes and of course we also have the addition of new parts and so maybe we should also make use of the new parts in building our rocket. So the obvious thing to do is, and I'm going to go through the build process in the VAB because a lot of the fixes had to do with VAB issues so we'll see what issues we come up with. And uh, no, I don't want the mod propellant tank. That would be really heavy though, but uh, it's more impressive to have the hydrogen bulbous tank and not put a fairing around it. And uh, to make things worse, deliberately, okay, uh, we are going to put a docking port on top. Well, I mean, we've seen this before. I've launched, of course, the five sphere module to lathe, and that had a lot of wobbliness. We do have uh, the Clampatron Mark II docking port. That's nice for space planes, and we will get to space planes, and hopefully our wings will work better now. But uh, yeah, uh, probably this will be, if, if since the SOI change issue has not been fixed, I think this patch will be a space plane focused patch, assuming that the wings are fixed. But we'll see how that goes. So here we have a very big hydrogen tank, and so we will have a appropriate engine. Well, I mean, it doesn't fit exactly right, but I'll tuck it in and we'll see whether there's any issues with that. Uh, we'll just leave it like that. And uh, we should have a controller on. And maybe a reaction wheel. We'll make it an independent spacecraft just like this. They haven't added the electric charge consumption as far as I know, so that should not be a problem. We are making it in this case so that the core is not the root I'm actually going to probably reroute to the core on the launcher and we'll see how that goes. That'll make it somewhat more stable. So actually I'm going to tuck a little core in here and I'm going to route to that core. So we have three extendable nozzle engines, the coronet, the trumpet, and the tuba. And in this case the stage is going to require the tuba. And what we see here is a 510 kilonewton engine, 5 tons of mass, and 385 seconds of ISP. So, I don't know whether I'm going to use that's a lot of mass for that kind of thrust. And we'll see how that works out for us. But, yeah, they're not using the trick that I used on my ED4 slash ED8 engine which was used for the Shinkansen space plane in KSP-1, which is that those engines can fire at sea level as well with the nozzle retracted. And that was an idea from the space shuttle program before they came up with the very unique nozzle for the RS-25s, the space shuttle main engines. Uh, they were trying to figure out how to get the engine to be able to fire at sea level and then also operate at high efficiency in vacuum. And they thought about using an extendable nozzle for that for the space shuttle main engines. But ultimately they just create a very unique nozzle for the RS-25s 
and that worked just fine. But the Shinkansen space plane that I made in KSP-1 uh, takes that idea from the space shuttle program and uses it so that the space plane side of the Shinkansen stack has those extendable nozzle engines, fires the engines at sea level, and then extends the nozzle later on to get vacuum efficiency. So these engines do not have the dual mode thing. And actually, um, well, we do have the rapier engine that does have a dual mode thing. But other than that, we don't I, don't, I don't think. But dual mode capability is something in this program right now. We know from the rapier engine. So that's good, but they're not on this engine. All right, so let's see how this one works. I mean, that might not be enough thrust, but we'll put a lot of boosterage. I think we can do with a little bit less with this engine. All right, well, there's barely enough to lift off with this and barely enough to get to orbit. I think uh, we'll trim it a little bit. I do wonder why the upper stage doesn't seem to have any delta V. Oh, but that's probably because of the staging. Uh, because we've got the root here. So hopefully the rest of the stack is reading correctly. Okay, so now this is obviously a thing that will require fins. So let's put fins. I'm gonna go with the stabilizers. And we'll go with, uh, we'll go with large. I feel like this could do with some large ones. Barely enough thrust weight ratio to lift off. Large fins. It says the center of mass and center of pressure are like that, which... It's just not reading the center of pressure from the top. So the center of lift indicator is still properly wrong. It, yeah, see? It defaults to having the center of pressure at the same location as the center of mass when there are no wing parts, uh, which is not how that works, because there sure as heck is. They call it the center of pressure, but they're not thinking about the pressure here, even though we know very well there's going to be a lot of pressure here. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, that, that indicator is not good, still. Okay, but the main question is, will these fall off immediately? And we haven't put any struts on them. Let's see. Well, we'll just call this fly safe. This looks like something that ought to be called fly safe. Well, this is really high up. I'm gonna pull it down. Okay, that's better. I just wanted to make sure that there's no falling off tendency when it's lower down or anything. Okay, so, so far so good. Let's launch it and see how that goes. And launch. And off it goes. The fly safe, everyone. And I'm gonna try a proper turn with it, too. I've got fins, after all. Well, looking good so far, past 200 meters per second. Okay, uh, I would like you to point at Prograde. I don't suppose they've improved SAS at all. There's a bit more shallow than I'd like it, but yeah, I mean, Prograde, Prograde, come on. Well, okay, um, I think I'm gonna have to do it. This is just not pointing at Prograde at all. Okay, separation and should be ignited, right? Oh, there we go. Uh, maybe it was on a separate stage after all. Oh, it's got little verniers. That's interesting. I don't know any extendable nozzle engine that has verniers. That's an interesting combination. Usually the extendable nozzle engines actually do gimbal. Or they really did not want to do the gimbal animations when having the extendable nozzle. Maybe that they were just trying to cheat that. Because trying to do the gimbal animations while having the extendable nozzle can be a little bit tricky. Depending on how you look at it. Okay, well we don't have a lot of thrust. They still haven't fixed the part where it still says T- minus when you're past apoapsis. It should be T+, plus, of course. Or 
or it could go wrap around and give us a really big number till the next apoapsis. That's possible too. To be honest, at this point, I think we're better off just dumping this stage. Uh, yeah, we need to focus up here and go. So I'll have to think about the optimal rocket for use with those extendable nozzle engines. We'll see. This was clearly not it, but we were testing something else, really. Fortunately, this does have a thrust weight ratio greater than 1, so we are going to just power through to orbit, and then let's take a look at... Well, Minmus is always possible, and Minmus had the SOI change issue. So maybe we'll toss it over to Minmus and see what happens and whether the orbit is still messed up on the way back or not. So I think that's the plan. Otherwise, what other plans do we have? Um, I don't think we're in alignment with anything else right now. Okay, that's enough going straight up, so... But you know, honestly, if my fins don't fall off on the launch pad, that's a great relief. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm happy at least we've gotten that. If that's consistent. Okay, we're in orbit, and I'm not going to belabor that. So, we got to orbit, we didn't have any problems. First launch in patch 3 was a success. And we will continue on to Minmus. Oh, we actually got an SOI encounter there with Minmus. Uh, we'll do a mid-course adjustment to do the rest. I'm not doing an off-plane transfer or anything fancy. Okay. Let's see it turn to the maneuver node. I mean, I've got a reaction wheel on here, plus the control core, so... Yeah, that did pretty well there. And go. And stop. Well, I did that as accurately as I could. Let's see what it ended up doing. It's a little bit shy. Oop. Oh, when I when I hold down the little handlebar to tweak this, it has the SOI change down here. I'm not where they're supposed to be if you take a look at the line. And the SOI entry and exit markers aren't really where they ought to be in the orbit either. You can see there's... I don't know where they are. They're like 90 degrees off from where the orbit line is. You can see the yellow orbit line going through. Well, not 90 degrees. It's uh, it's just randomly off. The SOI change sort of concentric circles are completely different from the location of the orbit. But, you know, Minmus was messed up to begin with. So, yeah. Very peculiar. And then, again, when you try to pull the handle, it goes back to the lower one. But the lower one is also having the concentric circles in the wrong location. So, fun, fun, fun. Anyway, uh, hopefully this will help and we will capture Robin and Miss before trying to come back and I fully expect on the way back that things are gonna be the wrong way around. So, we're just testing that that's still an issue. There are a lot of performance optimizations and Probably a lot of the effort went into the visuals and the performance issues. Just taking a look at the patch notes. They did apparently fix the Delta V display in the VAB and uh, we saw that it displayed properly given where the core was. So far things seem to be working out on the Delta V side. But. There are plenty of weird configurations that I could think of that could mess that up. Okay, well we're gonna go partial thrust here, so I'm gonna start early and we're just gonna go with the little Delta V. Uh oh, it's a... Uh, okay, they haven't fixed the issue with the node wandering as the... When we're doing a normal burn, the node wanders, it's not supposed to do that. <laughs> it shouldn't be following the normal vector. When doing maneuver you'll end up endlessly burning like that so that's not fixed 
A lot to do with maneuvers. Oh, we've got a nice free return, actually. Um, well, actually, it's a free return after we pass by the moon kind of thing. That's an interesting combo. I'm almost tempted to do that, but let's not. <laughs> we'll, we'll test what we're supposed to test. But yeah, uh, the maneuver node, when doing a inclination change, should not follow the, the change in the reference frame. Okay, it's a pretty high periapsis, but that's fine. We've got oodles of delta V anyway. Okay, capture burn. And we'll go ahead and circularize at a low altitude. Okay, so now let's see about the issue that we've had before. So we know that in order to get into uh, Kerbin transfer orbit, going back to Kerbin, we would want to uh, go up here and burn this away. Like that. And that would be a nice efficient thing to go back with, but it shows us going to a higher orbit and ultimately escape. So yes, that issue remains. And I'm going to do this burn and demonstrate that that's not what's going to happen. It will send us to a lower orbit and have us head back to Kerbin. But I'm going to do it to an extent where we're going to get a nice, nicer location around Kerbin. So this shows us really being flung out and then we're going... Oh, we've done this sort of thing before. I'm just saying that they haven't fixed the issue in this patch and we'll look forward to them fixing it in the next one, hopefully. But this is establishing why I'm probably not going to be doing interplanetary missions in this version. And we're going to stick to space planes since now at least the wings might be fixed. But we'll explore that thoroughly. We're going to have many wings. <laughs> we're going to have many wings with many opportunities for them to fall off. And then we'll see for sure whether or not they're safe now or not. And again, I'm going to do partial thrust while so I'll start a little bit early. That's not going to change the direction of our resulting orbit. Okay, that's close enough. And we see that it still shows us being flung out of the system. And we will get out of Minus SOI. Now this isn't a problem with the moon. It's just Minmus. Duna and Jewel, as far as I know, and one of the moons of Jewel, I think. Okay, SOI change. Oop. And yes, we're on a nice trajectory back to Kerbin. Uh, so yes, that is still a problem. Okay, but I'm not going to continue with this too much more. We could dock something to this and use this as a tug. Actually, it's a pretty good tug. We could refuel it and use it for our things. But... Where would we go with it exactly? Where would it be safe? Anyway, we'll leave this be. And so that is my first exploration of patch 3. And the plus side, the fins don't fall off and our rocket did not immediately disintegrate on the launch pad. This is a big improvement. So we will be thankful for that. And I'll see what I can do with further experimentation in this version. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.